Hello, so today or what I'm going to show you is basically how to set up timers on the STM32 Nucleo board. So what would be the purpose of a timer? Um, you could set up your own personal delays, uh, a watchdog and basically use them for the likes of asynchronous function calls or to generate the likes of a PWM signal and things like that. Uh, what's a watchdog? So a watchdog is basically uh, That's another sort of whole video, but to sum it up. It's basically a way of if your MCU your microcontroller doesn't check in within a given time the board resets So it's basically if there's something wrong the board will just reset and keep going So you can get it to do things like that and in terms of delays why you would want to use this over the likes of the HAL delay is basically the HAL delay is a blocking function so whenever it's called it just halts the program until uh, until that sort of time that you've given it has elapsed so this is a way of using timers as a way of creating a delay or triggering something after a delay but not blocking your code so to sort of first off what we need to do is look up on the data sheet so I've just looked up the part number of the microcontroller I'm using and if you go into data sheet then what you can do is there's loads of different sections but what I want to do is look for timers so I have loads of timers on this board and I'm in this example I'm using timer 3 so it's a 16-bit timer, uh, the counter resolution is 16-bit. This, this will make sense whenever we come to looking at how you calculate certain values. The prescalar value is a, or the prescalar factor is 16-bit as well. So those are important factors to know. And then one other thing we need to know is, if I can find it. If you look here, it's kind of hard to see, but if you look here, the maximum... Uh, frequency along this that these all these uh, peripherals can use is 36 megahertz and it's basically running off this APB1 so in CubeMX if we look for this APB1 it'll tell us what frequency or clock source that this timer 3 is using so from here now that we know we're looking for APB, APB1 in CubeMX what we can do is go back to cubemx and see what I've already set up so what you need to do is select your timer so timer 3 in this example and then select your channel I've just went it for channel 1 and if you click it and open in this example there's loads of options I have just chosen for output compare channel 1 so the difference between output compare and output and output compare channel 1 is that output compare just doesn't generate like an output on this pin whereas output compare channel 1 uh, generates an output to this pin so uh, it'll pulse this I believe actually I'll, I'll just do no output and then what I've done is I've actually selected PC8 as an output pin so just frequency example and I believe this is orange because it means that it's being used and we can't use it as a GPIO, I think. So from here, what we can do is I can look at the, uh, what you'll see is you'll have that as zero and this will be zero and your counter mode should be set to up. So the prescaler is basically what happens is with our value so I was looking for APB1 and the reason for that in the data sheet is because if you look here timer 1 has a clock frequency set but all the other clock frequencies for peripherals and timers are here and you can see APB1 and APB2 as two lines so APB1 for timer clocks is 64 megahertz which I have to say I was not expecting Anyway, it doesn't really matter. We know that the frequency here is 64 megahertz for APB1. So if I come back, then we also need to know our prescaler value and our automatic 
register reload or auto reload register i should say that we need that value as well so the reason we need those values is because we need to calculate the uh, we need to cal calculate those values so you can do that with these this function here uh, so time uh, auto reload register value prescaler value and clock frequency so that's what all these values are so if i do i need to fix this i'll upload this with the code but basically that's what these values all mean so time in seconds is small t and it's changed and um, we also yeah so what we need to do is pick a value here so generally the consensus is that you pick a prescaler value first and this prescaler value basically takes this clock frequency and scales it down so in our case we can we can pick a thousand or two thousand let's go two thousand let's spice things up a bit so with a prescaler pre value of two thousand a uh, clock frequency of 64 megahertz and if i want a one second delay then from that we can work out what uh, the value of the auto reload register can be set to so the way to do that is to transpose this so that we have arr on one side of the equal sign and then all our known values on the other side so i'm going to work this out uh let's do it here uh, let me see so if I work this out, it's a one second delay. So one times anything is just anything. So one times N is just N or in our case, the clock frequency. So it's 64 megahertz divided by 2001. So we've picked a, a, a prescaler value of 2000. So that'll give us roughly 31967 as a value. Okay, 31984 is what we've got. That's fine. So this is basically the value of the auto reload register that we need. Notice it's not exact. And I believe this is where the problems come in with like counter drift and things like that. But that's a different story. This is why you need like atomic clocks rather than just these these kind of clocks. So if I, I'm going to make a note of this, 31984 as the auto reload register value so if we take all those values and go back to cuba max what we can do is fill these in so we, we picked a value of 2000 for the prescaler and then for this value it was 31984 so that's basically our clocks setup or our, our our one timer clock setup uh what else do we need to do we need to i can sort of explain what this is doing so more or less the counter, the, this timer operates a counter and the counter counts from zero to the value in this auto reload register. So in our case, it'll go from uh, zero to three, one, nine, eight, four for every clock period of the, of the clock. So every one clock period, this counter will increment once uh, until it eventually reaches this value. And then from there, whenever it reaches this value or goes over this value, it'll generate an interrupt. And then the end dropped we can use to do some stuff and then the counter is reset to zero and it counts up to this value again and it just does that over and over again so this is basically how we can set up a one second delay using an interrupt and continue running our code and then every second for example we can uh we can set an led or we can print to the terminal for example uh, the last thing we need to do is set this so if you go into nvic and you enable uh, this global interrupt and then we can use this to do some stuff with the terminal and an led just double check as well that it's enabled in here so nvic under system core nvic and it should be enabled there and then from that what we can do is generate the code And I already have this done, but basically what you'll see is the timer handle generated. And I have set a flag. Oh God. I have set a Boolean flag to false. And what we're going to do is just print the letter B over and over again. I was using this in my yard example. 
um, or my Europe protocol video. So yeah, this flag is used. So basically what happens is that we need to call this and set this to start the interrupt to the timer interrupt and pass in the handle so it won't take me to the function but that's fine um that's all this does is just starts the timer interrupt so you just feed it the handle of the timer in our case it's timer three and then in here what i can do is before what we were doing was setting this delay and what was happening is in this wild one loop we were coming in here, hitting this, we, well, we were coming in here and printing, if I get rid of these, these weren't here before, we were printing a value to the terminal every second, so printing a value and then coming down here and going, okay, we've got to here, we're going to wait for a, a second, and what this would do is this would block any other functionality in this, so in this while loop, so if I had uh, code down here that needed to run, what would happen is this would just stop everything until this one second elapsed and then it would continue and it would do that all the time so this is one of the advantage uh, advantages of timers as interrupts we don't need to do that blocking what we can do is just use a boolean flag and it'll just constantly check if this flag eventually when this flag gets set we'll print something to the terminal and then we'll set it to false again at the bottom so yeah that's basically all this does this is basically a nice wee way of running this without blocking anything else running our code so that's basically what's in the while loop and then if we come down to where we've added our timer function so this is the callback so that you need to add this in whenever you're whenever you're creating this interrupt so if you just make this function in your code, um, it will be empty. You'll be able to get it somewhere. Yeah, so you can get it there. It's probably declared as weak somewhere. If I search for it quickly, it should be declared as a weak function. Okay, it's not. It's not even de uh, declared as a function. It's, oh, it's declared, but it's not set as a function or called anywhere. So you you call it in here, and then in here, what you can do is you can do whatever whatever work you want to do but considering i um set an interrupt i just set this flag as true and then leave and then what i've also done is uh, just for for example i've set this toggle pin so anytime it comes in here it'll toggle this pin on and then it'll be on for a second and then the next time it comes in it'll turn it off so every second it'll be on and then it'll be off and it'll be on and it'll be off and whenever this flag gets set true this will just leave this function and then in the while loop it'll continue for wherever it was so it could have been here or it could have been here in the while loop and then because the flag's true it'll come in here print and then that's basically all it does and uh, so what i can do is build this after make sure you generate the code don't forget to do that and debug it and then what i can do is i can show you i'll show you in the terminal first what it's doing so if i just press well, we'll set up the terminal first so all the bees and if i come in here and it's just continuing to print so the reason it's not going to the new line which i've forgotten to do is because there's three characters but i'm only sending uh one out over the yard so that's why it's just continuing to do this but as you can see it's printing every second and i'll also have the have the oscilloscope hooked up to demonstrate this so if i change the pulse width every every one square on this so this one square for example over is equal to this time down here so if i change that to 500 milliseconds then 
every one square is worth 500 milliseconds. And 500 milliseconds times two is equal to one second, which is why you're seeing two squares for every second. And then if I change that again to one second per division, then we're seeing that our clock is outputting once every second. It's not exact because I didn't get it lined up exact on the on the oscilloscope, but basically that's the long and short of how to set up a timer and why you would want to do one. It's no more complicated than that. It's actually quite simple once you get your head around it. Uh, the hardest part, honestly, is transposing this formula, transposing this to this, more or less, and that's me i'm i'll have this uploaded and the code uploaded as well but i'm gonna go now and chill out for the rest of the day so bye